Viewers and subscribers, welcome to Guyanese News, where we discuss news about Guyana and the diaspora. If you're new to this YouTube channel and you want breaking and trending Guyanese content, smash the subscribe button. Today, we are going to address how Guyanese critics in serious trouble after a recent press conference release from the government, especially Barack Javier. We are going to address how critics get banned from being around the government. Yes, if you're new, like I stated, and you want breaking news, become a member of this YouTube channel so you will get perks leave a thumbs up on this video and a comment in the comment section then we are going to play a video a Guyanese is exposing what is taking place in Guyana this is a video of trending topic let's get this video started news around social media stating that Guyanese critics has been banned from the state house banned from keeping press conference with the vice president Barack Jack Dio and banned from being associated with the vice president according to the news that is circulating on Facebook and the reason why people said this is happening is because of Guyanese critics' legal trouble that is going through. We all know Guyanese critics get but 10 lawsuits he's facing right now. He even decided he is going to go to court. He is not going to apologize to Mohammed and make this lawsuit disappear. This $200 million lawsuit is going to court, right? And because of those happenings, the government decided that they are going to distance themselves from Guyanese critics. Because what is taking place in Guyana, I know everybody noticed all of the American top leaders they are visiting Guyana. Not just America, around the world. Even this latest announcement that Bill Clinton, yes, Bill Clinton is going to visit Guyana. But Guyanese have to be very careful. We all know with our country full of oil money and a lot of people trying to give Guyana help. So Guyanese critics has been banned from association with the government. This is serious happiness because we all know Guyanese critics get banned from Western Union, get banned from MoneyGram because he is a politically exposed person. He even went on his Facebook program and behaved real bad when he was banned from collecting money from overseas, Western Union and MoneyGram. No America even giving no visa. And then CIA and DEA come in Guyana, then the FBI. So the government decided that they are going to ban critics from being association with them. We all know the government trying to clean house right now. Because Guyana going in the international scale and we can't get bad character lingering around the government. So the government banned critics, banned Mohammed for even sharing out things. Because Barra Jagdio is cleaning camp. So leave your comment in the comment section and tell the people why you feel critics get banned from being around Barra Jagdio. Check out this video, then we are going to continue. Remember, thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, leave a comment in the comment section. And to become a member, you can just press the member button and become a member, become a supporter, because we love Guyana. And this YouTube channel is going to give you more breaking and trending Guyanese content. Guyanese critics get banned for being around the government. Guyanese critics need to go on his Facebook page and give Guyana a public apology. He need to apologize to the old Guyana and ask for forgiveness. They must look for the critics morning show before them start the day so they could get all of the things that is going on. People looking for the critics because critics have a lot of fans but his name is mentioned in as a con man. The among the last suit right now critics reputation gets spoiled. And the only way that Guyanese is saying critics could save himself is come on his Facebook page and give this country a public apology. Leave your comment because Mohammed and critics fall out. The Korean lady and critics fall out. Simona Brooms and critics fall out. No, he has been banned from being associated with the government. This is serious thing because we know critics get all of his jobs, the majority of his government project because he was closely linked with the vice president and was good friend. They must go at Marriott Hotel at Naglas and Gaff. 
he just be there with the vice president having his exclusive press conference and right now he get banned from the state house critics cannot be seen with the government official taking up any photograph anymore because of this whole public meltdown and the amount of lawsuit and Barajak Dio, our vice president, is trying to clean house. So the only way Guyanese critics could get back in a Guyana grace is come out and give a public apology to the country. You is known for that. You is the realest thing. That wouldn't take nothing out of you. The same way he could apologize and make Mohammed drop the 200 million dollar lawsuit. A big man could apologize. When you're wrong, you're wrong. We don't know if critics wrong or if critics right. We are just giving our opinion as Guyanese news who does watch Guyana critics show. So the country right now is waiting on a public apology from Guyanese critics. Maybe then the vice president is going to see he is very sincere about his missteps and bring him back into the camp. What you think about this? Remember, this is Guyanese news. If you want breaking and trending Guyanese content, smash the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Let this video go to 1000 thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section if you feel Guyanese critics should give you this whole country a public apology. We deserve that. Now check out this video and then we are going to continue. For becoming a member, just touch the membership button and you can give this this channel some support this is guyanese news where we discuss news about guyana kaicho news not good with numbers and they distort a lot of numbers the reporter should have asked exxon for a production profile the new cock and bull story they come up with about peeking to pull wool over the eyes. This tape should be played back over and over tonight. Listen how rude he is. Play it back again, let me hear. Hey, good afternoon, Dr. Jagger. Sharvin with Kite Shore, Sharvin Bell Group. Um, just before I move into my questions, um, just for some. Your question first, not just before. You move so to your I, question. I want some clarity on what you mentioned about the 604. If you can explain to us how is it that um, the project life is going to reach to 24 to 7, based on the figures that Exxon have given you. And the reason why I'm asking this, hear me out before you answer. The reason why I'm asking this, if you check Exxon's website, right, and they give an overview of these three projects, it, it says in these first three projects, there's an estimated 1.7, 1.8 billion barrels of oil. Um, they're currently producing at 645, and Exxon itself has said that by 2025 they would have taken out already from these three projects some 500 million barrels. That will leave like 1.2, uh, 1.3, let's say 1.3 billion. Yeah, but here now, your culture is not great with numbers, and they distort a lot of numbers. You just should look at the pro. What you should ask is for the pro production profile submitted by Exxon. So Exxon has submitted the production profile and up to the end year. This is what it looks like. It's peak in by the end of the, maybe by 2029, 20, 2030, 20, and then it declines. So this is precisely why, for Kaichor's new sick, this is precisely why that your investments now have to grow. That is why you need to license new projects to bring them on stream so that as the older wells start peaking and declining, the new ones start peaking. And therefore, you can levelize your production around a stable, around a stable number in the future. So it makes it very, when Kaicho News talks about, oh, we're, not, we're just investing, investing in and we're not ring fencing, and we can take that money and spend it out now. They're not thinking, you have provided even yourself the argument for it by pointing this out. There is, that's the justification. If you think it through carefully, carefully, that wells will peak and then decline. 
And if you want to be producing stably to ensure that the income comes in over the long term stably for the country, you have to constantly approve new projects. So that we have to constantly approve more projects. We have to issue more license. Yes, uncle. We have to give Exxon more projects to grow the investments. So when the older wells start peaking and declining, the new ones will start peaking to have a stable number in the future. This is one of Exxon Mobil's best employees, Barajaglio. They couldn't ask for a better PR person to sell Exxon schemes. Jagdev is the best. Notice what he is saying there, uncle. Not dealing with the question that the oil will finish in the three projects by 2029 or 2030. But giving us a story how the oil will last in the three projects till 2047. Look at the production profile online. Put it up for them. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you will see by 2029, 2030, five, six years from now, Uncle, just little dribblings will be left in those three projects. And what Guyana will get out of them? <laughs> Think about it, Uncle. At present, all three of them peaking. They're peaking and pumping. 645,000 barrels a day. And all Guyana getting is one point something billion US. A year. When it takes the downward curve. Yes. Using Jagdeo words. Plateauing by 2030 to 100,000 barrels a day. Guyana will be getting not 1.6 billion a year. We will be getting Pampers money from them three projects. Till, according to Jack Dave again, 2047. Yes. <laughs> I'm playing him back for y'all to hear again, man. I want to hear every word. Come out, comes out this man mouth. Play it back, brother. Hey, good afternoon, Dr. Jagu. Sharvin with Kite Shore, Sharvin Belgrave. Um, just before I move into my questions, um, just for some... Move into your question first, not just before. You move to your I, question. I want some clarity on what you mentioned about the 604. If you can explain to us how is it that um, the project life is going to reach to 24 to 7, based on the figures that Exxon have given you. And the reason why I'm asking this, hear me out before you answer. The reason why I'm asking this, if you check Exxon's website, right, and they give an overview of these three projects, it, it says... In these first three projects, there's an estimated 1.7, 1.8 billion barrels of oil. Um, they're currently producing a 640. Uncle and auntie, I hear how offended that man gets when you ask him anything.